Push and show. We fall in the LLC. And let me tell you a little bit about them. They're a VC firm, which means they invest in startups. And so I got involved with them right when I graduated college as part of their talent fellowship. When I moved to New York City, I had a job at Bolt, as you know, and they had a WeWork space. So I'd work out of there or sometimes from home. It's nice to split up your life with your personal and your work. And I wanted some place I could call at my workplace. So I reached out to them and they asked if I had a job because if you have a job, you have a workplace, but I didn't. And so they said I could come. And when I started recruiting, this is also where I did. I applied to a bunch of startups, mid-sized companies, did a bunch of interviews, but nothing was panning out. And I've never worked for a big tech company before. They're public, their cash is liquid, and it's an experience I've been chasing for a while. And so I thought, why not apply to the Metas, Googles, Netflix of the world, and LinkedIn? I know it sounds crazy with the hiring freezes and the layoffs, but if you don't try, you'll never know. And so let me pull up my LinkedIn where my LinkedIn story actually begins. So to give you some context, there was an intern who worked at Bolt when I was still there. And so I decided to reach out to her and that was actually before I applied anyway. So on October 7th, I shot her a message and basically said, hey, I don't know if you remember me. We worked on the financial products team together. I'm interested in opportunities at LinkedIn. I'm just ramping up my recruiting. Is there any way you can refer me? And she said, sure, just send me links to any jobs that you might be a good fit for and I'll put in the referral. So I found a couple, send them over to her. And then on October 13th, one day later, she said she submitted the referral. I should have received an email, which I did. I was a little confused initially because LinkedIn has this weird thing where every backend engineer is called an applications engineer, but turns out everyone is just backend. So I applied to the backend opening for a senior software engineer based in New York City. Don't leave me hanging. I'm alive to you just to get through the night. 34th Street, Herald Square. I know you lie to me. It's only right that I lie. On October 18th, I get this message and it says, Hi Nevin, I just reviewed your application to LinkedIn and think you'd be a great fit here. Now normally, I wouldn't make a big deal about this, right? You apply, you get the interview, but I got an interview at a big tech company in the midst of hiring freezes. LinkedIn had just had layoffs. So I was shocked, shocked that they reached out to me so quickly and then also surprised that they had any headcount whatsoever. Now again, I didn't think my chances to actually get the job were high at all. In fact, I thought my chances were very low because I have three years of experience and this is a senior software engineering role. But the fact that they got back to me was crazy. Union Square Park, baby. Probably one of my favorite places in Manhattan where the recruiter called me, I picked up, and he asked me a bunch of basic questions like, do I have citizenship? Do I need sponsorship? And am I based in New York City? Because the role was hybrid in the New York City office. I said yes to everything, and I just wanted some cash. I mean, I didn't tell him that, but I wanted some cash. At Bolt, I only had a base salary and then equity, which never materialized, probably never will, honestly, which is super sad. But I was just ready for some 401k matching and some free food and some other nice benefits. I don't remember exactly what I said, but it must have been good enough because at the end, he asked if I had any questions for him. So I asked him, what does the interview process look like? Because that's important. So he said that the recruiter screen I had just done was step one. If I passed that, the next round was the phone screen, which was technical, 45 minutes. It usually be one or two people. There's a warm up question and then an actual meaty question that you're supposed to answer after that. If all goes well there, you're invited to the onsite, which is virtual. Kind of sad because again, the role is based in New York, so I'd love to go to the office, get lunch with my future coworkers and do it in some real conference room with a marker and a whiteboard. And then if you passed that, you'd have some cell call with the hiring manager and then that was basically it. I said all that sounded good to me and he mentioned the next step would be someone would reach out to schedule that first phone screen interview. You wear a hat, they call dad. Me, I'm the dad in a hat. Like and the rest of this story continues right here in this room. We are open for business, baby. So the next saga of this story are the actual interviews and then the negotiation. So I'm gonna walk you through every single interview question along with every single number. So after Union Square, I head back home and then I just start playing the waiting game. But after some back and forth, I actually got that email saying, provide your availability, let's go ahead and schedule that first round interview. So I sent them back a bunch of times. I honestly sent them times I wasn't even free because at this point I just needed to get that interview 
because the more steps I can continue in the process, the higher chance I actually get it. This first interview was scheduled on a Friday morning. I want to say around 10 a.m. Eastern. So fast forward to that Friday morning, I hop on the Zoom and every single LinkedIn interview always has two people the main interviewer and the shadower. So I hop on the meeting and I only see one face. And remember that I got an email confirming the two people that should have been on the call. And he's like, hi, my name is whatever. We're waiting for the main interviewer, X, Y, Z. The guy internally on Slack messages the other interviewer and is like, hey, can you make it? No response. So after 10 minutes go by, the shadow interviewer is like, hey, we might have to reschedule this because I actually don't have the jurisdiction to continue against company policy. Big companies move slowly for sure. But every time there's a little bit of friction or you hit a snag, that's like more opportunity for someone else who's already in the process, who might have already done the onsite, who got the offer to just take the spot. This time I show up again and there are two interviewers. So they give me the first question. I don't remember exactly what it is. And even if I did, I probably can't share it with you, but I don't think it was that bad. But in this case, you couldn't run the code. So we just talked over it. I was able to prove that it worked and maybe I went through one test case or something. Then they give me the actual problem. This one I remember because it was so hard. It's one of those tree recursion problems that you might have seen before kind of, but every time you do it, it feels new and different and there's so many opportunities to get something wrong. If you just miss the base case slightly, infinite recursion. So I finished the interview and this time they get back to me quite quickly. I don't know if it's because they owe me after that first interview mishap and rescheduling, but they got back to me maybe one or two days later and they were like, we would love to move you to the onsite. I was very excited. The chance, first of all, that I get any fang offer is probably like lower than 1%. To get one in New York, hybrid, the week of layoff, one opening in the entire office. I mean, that is like 0.0000001%. The recruiter reaches out and they're like, hi, Naman, we would love to proceed in the process and invite you in for a virtual onsite interview. So you got two technical, one system design. All right, then there's lunch, 30 minutes, <laughs> optional in italics, boys gotta eat. Then we got technical communication, which again, fancy way of just saying hiring manager interview. All right, so let's walk through every single one, right? now. All right, we start off with the host manager, literally nicest guy. And I'm not just saying that because he's my now current manager, which was coincidental because I've been reorged and you're going to hear about my entire LinkedIn story after I actually got the offer. That's we're starting a new series. People, we're starting a new series. It was finding a job series. Now it's got a job series. And there's so much to talk about. My first week onboarding, all the free stuff they gave me, perks and benefits, almost got fired. Yes, 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 you heard that, almost got fired. Senior engineer imposter syndrome, so, so much to talk about, so much, so much to come. But first interview, host manager, I pulled up my resume and I said, look at all this stuff I built. I think I walked him through the private label credit card integration because I practiced it so many times and it was the one I was using in all my interviews. It, it was unique and it was special. All right, without being too sappy, we finished that interview and we go to the next coding interview. It was tough, except I had seen both questions before. And so that's where practice and preparedness and chance meets luck. So I kind of knew the trick and I knew some of the outline of how to do it, but I don't remember exactly what to do. So I was kind of reasoning it through again. And that's really important because if you know everything, you just type it out, they're gonna be a little sus. And also they're not gonna get any signal because you wanna talk out loud, you wanna make some mistakes, you wanna act human. And I knew how to structure my response. I was very level-headed and, and that, this one was good. This was good. Again, there was two questions. First one was good. The second one was hard, hard as balls. Like I'm talking DP hard, DP. You have X amount of houses and you wanna paint them, but no house can be the same color and you gotta do this and like how many different painting sequ I don't even remember. It was so complicated, it was so hard. And they gave me some hints and I remember I was trying to code it and I got really stuck because with DP, you have to make some matrix and it gets very confusing. And so I was writing all this code down and they're like, let's just, let's just take a step back. Don't worry about the code. Let's just write it down with words. You know, what is house one? What is house two? What are the different colors? What are the different options? And like build it out. And once I made my own little Excel spreadsheet table, no code, I could kind of figure out what the matrix should look like. And then I don't think I even wrote any code after that because we ran out of time. I just said everything out loud. I was like, okay, we're going to build this matrix. We're going to do this. We're going to traverse it this way. And then in the end, the last cell is going to be the answer. And it was correct. Then we go to the technical communication. I don't remember much about this one, except he did, yes, go to school in Dallas. And we connected on that. And I think this was pretty behavioral. We just kind of chatted, crushed this one again. Then we come to the next coding interview. And this one is very interesting because most LinkedIn interviews give you two questions. This one was only one, and it was a big meaty one. It's one of those where you have to create your own data structure to optimally do something. So they give you some specifications like, hey, we'd love to retrieve an O of N, or we'd love to um, look up in O of one or something. And you have to build your own custom data structure for those requirements to be as efficient as possible. Um, but again, all pseudocode. So I'm writing a bunch of stuff and uh, I finish and the interviewer kind of went silent the entire time. It's one of those where it wasn't that collaborative, like literally just mute. And then I was just talking out loud to myself the entire time. So no real hints, no help. I'm just kind of like going through it. I finished the question. And she comes back and she asks me, hey, can you prove that it's this efficiency? And I'm kind of walking through my code and she's like, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's OVEN. And it wasn't. 
to, to spoil the surprise, it wasn't O of N, but I didn't know that. I was so confident in my solution and I walked through a couple examples and I just get very lucky with the examples that I pick because they are O of N for all those examples. And she asked me once, I walked through it. She asked me again, the shadow interviewer asked me one more time. We walked through it together, all of us. And we were like, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> all right, I guess it's O of N. And they're probably thinking this guy is a genius, like Olympiad level genius, because no one in the history of LinkedIn interviews have ever has ever solved this better than N log N, whatever the optimal is, except this guy. And so we move on. And now it's like, I've impressed the shit out of it. I walk out the interview, I go to my roommate, I'm like, guys, I, oh God, I killed it. I crushed it. Like, ooh. And then my roommate, who is way smarter than me, is like, nah, his brother was in town too. And so theoretically they're like, no, just th think about it. You, you can't go back that much. You have to look up first and then sort or whatever. And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> you might be right actually. And so we do it on a cardboard box and it, he's right. I, that's not the optimal. So the, the moral of the story is stand up for yourself. And I, I'm interviewing for a senior engineer role, which means in meetings, I'm going to have to defend my solutions. I'm going to have to stick up for my team, right? I just happened to crush that interview, the one before that. I was, just, I was crushing every interview in this onsite, except for the last one. This interview was so hard. It is not a question you get for system design in any of the practices. It's not design Google Maps or design Instagram or tiny rail, like all the different patterns of system design interviews. No, it was hard because to code it wouldn't be hard. If this was like a leak code problem, you just say the data structure and you're good. It's like if someone said top K, you just say heap. But how do you make a heap in production at scale? This is the interview that after a full day of killing it, I thought that I might not get the job. So I didn't have high hopes after this. I remember I went back, I went to the, the pregame and I was a little sad and I was like telling them guys, like I just, this was the interview question that might've gay kept me from my dream job. But it didn't because very soon after this interview was on Monday, November 20th, she hopped on a call and told me that I got the offer and you'd expect someone to film the silence, but they're like waiting, waiting for that, waiting for that shock to wear off, that celebration mode to come in. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so Wow, I was, and I was trying to not be so excited because like, again, it's, it's this little game, right? So if you're too excited and they know, they can probably give you a lower offer and stuff. So I was like, oh no, that, wow, I'm very grateful, to, thank you. While also just inside being like, oh my fucking God, I got a job, like holy shit. Uh, but in that moment, in kind of a speed run, what basically happened was she was like, okay, what, what numbers would you like? And I wasn't expecting such a direct question or, you know, first of all, she, she gave me ranges. So let's not get ahead of myself. She gave me ranges. And the one thing I didn't really like was the range was so broad, but let's say it was like, you know, senior engineers make anywhere from 150 to 250 in base salary. And I was like, what, is, what does that even mean? It's like a hundred K range. Like wh where am I in that range? Right. And again, all these numbers are made up to do, do not think. <laughs> LinkedIn engineers get 250 base salary. That'd be insane unless they're like staff or senior staff, not me essentially. But imagine that's the range, 150 to 250. And then I basically say the top end of every range she gave me. Now looking back, maybe I could have pushed it even more out of the range, but from what I know now, the ranges she gave me were true. Those were the real ranges. And so I just gave her the top end of all those ranges. And she was like, no man, we can't do that. I mean, you're like, you're senior, but you know, you have X years of experience. The senior band is pretty big. You know, you can't come in with three years of experience and then be making more than someone with like four or five years of experience. And I wouldn't be making more because if you look at Microsoft stock, which you get as a LinkedIn employee because they own us, that stock has gone hella up. So if you look at their per year salary, it's more than whatever I'd be making for sure because of stock growth. But I still stood hard. And I said, I want the top end of all of these numbers. And so she actually ended up going up the approval chain. And I remember it got to a point where she was like, these numbers that you gave me, if we can hit them, do you verbally on this phone tell me you will sign? And I said, yes. So always negotiate, always push, like stand up for yourself. Now the one more piece of information that my recruiter told me, and I don't know if she should have, but she did. And I don't know if I can trust her, but I do when I think it's actually real. And I just want you to trust me. Is she said like there were multiple other people who had offers at LinkedIn for that one opening, but I was their top choice. Anyway, long story short, they go up the approval chain. They don't get the exact numbers I want, but they get pretty close. You know, they're never gonna hit it, but they get pretty close. And she says, we're, we're here. Like, are you ready to sign? And I said, yes, most often. I don't often feel worthy of my own respect, but uh, I did something that I think anyone has the right to be proud of. And I'm proud of myself for that. So with that, I love you and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.